All right, everybody, welcome back to round three of Louisiana State Championships. I got a new commentary with me today, Silas Schultz. What's up, everybody? So, we got we got some stuff heating up on the round three. We got Thunder trying his best to get up on Daniel and Joshua, and they are shooting hot. We got hole one, par three, 381 feet. It's a big hyzer hole. Yeah, I mean, I think when you step up to this hole, it's like the first hole you're around, the one thing you're thinking is like, don't throw it over that fence. And so a lot of people would just push it too long. So it takes like a really good precision hyzer to actually park this one for birdie. Yeah, unless your name's Daniel, then you're throwing a forehand and just hoping, uh, hoping you got it. And here we see Daniel first off the tee. The lefty forehand. I dig it. I don't know a lot about Daniel's game, um, but I am excited to see him play because it seems like he's been shooting well um, this tournament. Yeah, well, you're going to find out. Josh ripping on a big hyzer. Josh doing your standard play. Yeah. That looks good. To get to get left that much, I think that's what you want. Here we got uh, someone's brother. Right. Thunder, I can tell you maybe what disc he's throwing here. Um, actually, I can't see it. I'm going to guess, yeah, I believe that's a PD2. Yeah, it looks overstable enough. Only issue in this hole is you might worry about fence if you got too stable a disc, but I don't think anyone's going to be hitting it today. Ricky. Ricky Bobby. Oh my god, what a man. <laughs> For real. Do we know the exact height of Ricky Bobby? So, me and James talked about it, and James is six something, and Ricky stands a solid like six or seven inches over him. Okay, I'm going to say a conservative 6'10. Uh, Around maybe 6'11. We got a nice step hut here. That's, I mean, I feel like that. these are the looks that you get if you don't really commit to that hyzer. Uh, it's just kind of an outside the circle uphill look. Also, Daniel threw a forehand that far. That, never mind. Whoa. <laughs> Daniel's forehand was impressive, but that was ten times more impressive. And he's so tall, he just, that step putt, he's halfway there oh. before his foot hits the ground. We yeah. have the debate. It's ten feet is what he gets. <laughs> Thunder, that's, a, that's kind of a high run. Yeah, a little, I mean, a little high, probably... Just it's a little windy, so it could have got taken up by the wind. Josh with a solid bid, but a little on the left. I could be wrong, but it looked like he was about to throw it and then like kind of gave it an extra pump in second. And I mean that's that's a big confidence putt if you make that to start your round. That's a good confidence putt there too. But uh you definitely this feels like a bonus birdie to start your round. Oh yeah. If you're getting it like Ricky did, you are walking away probably a stroke on most people. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Because a 381 feet hyzer, you can do it, but it's not too easy. Right, and like I said, that fence kind of gets in your head and uh, makes it a little bit more difficult. And we got hole two, par four. You really just want to get to this like landing zone before the trees, and the basket is really tucked underneath these trees. If you can kind of get out on the fairway, you should have a look for a three. Yeah, my play here has always just been full yeet, and then kind of see what I have from there. Maybe yeah. it's maybe it's some sort of putt or, you know, blocker. when you can toss six hundred, you know, do whatever. But us mere mortals aren't <laughs> doing that. Ricky's saying he wants to copy what size his plan is, but a little early fade. He should still be way up. Yeah, and there. that might be a sidearm approach for him from there. Everything's a sidearm approach. For Ricky. <laughs> That's very true. Very true. Daniel is yeeting one. I can't even see it in one so fast. So oh, yeah. there, oh, there it is. is. He looks like he has a nice backhand forehand combo. Yeah, I think he has somewhere in the realm of like 480 on the backhand comfortably. And for Josh, that's a little sawed off to the left. It's still going to be playable. It's a nice wide open field. Right, yeah, he's going to be on that left side. This is this hole is a lot about the upshot, you know. What's you Thunder got here? That looks like a DD3. DD3. Uh, yeah. He's going hyzer flip. And that's the thing about the hyzer flip is you'll play it into that tree if, you, uh, if there's a headwind, which maybe there is right now. And um, from there... Yeah, it's going to be a little bit... Oh, he's going mutiny. Okay, yeah. so this is the mutant upside down, which has more glide and probably like a 10 speed. Um, <laughs> or no glide, actually. It's just straight speed. And wow, I think I'll have a look from there. Yeah, we, uh, me and Jays are playing a game of trying to count every time Thunder threw a disc upside down <laughs> of the day. And as you said, Ricky's got a forehand approach, and that's pretty good. Yeah, it kind of fought through those high branches. You kind of expect to just hit them and fall, but I mean... Having a look for three on this hole, definitely nice. I like this play from Josh. Yeah, as we said, even though he was a little sawed off, he's still in position right. for an easy birdie. 
Yeah, right? I think you definitely want to be right or left. Here is kind of a little more tricky, where he's kind of just looking straight at it. So if that pin's 600, Daniel's probably like 100 feet away, maybe 150. Yeah, and he's pretty close. Yeah, that that's kind of unfortunate. He hit the tree, rolled up the tree, and then stays exactly behind the tree. So yeah, working with a straddle here. And not much you can do when you're not in a comfortable putting position. Right. This is thunder to save birdie from underneath that branch with the mutiny approach. Yeah, just not didn't commit to that one. A little awkward trees in the way. Yeah. And Joshua, believe for a three. Boom, that's a good hit right there. That was dead center, easy. That was going in 100% of the time. Ricky, you can just reach this in. Yep. Yeah. You know, I was telling Ricky, it's like, dude, your 15 footers are tapping. You yeah. can just lean over. It's <laughs> very true. Don't we all wish we were like 6'10? That'd mm. be awesome. I don't know. I feel like there's different um, complications that come well, with Well, he can't fit tall. through a doorway. Yeah. So, and he says chandeliers really <laughs> suck. <laughs> Hole three, par four, 510 feet. It's another really big hyzer. So, the basket you're seeing is not the basket they're throwing to. Once you get out here to where this basket is, it's kind of a landing zone, the basket's even further tucked away in these woods. If you can see where that pole is, it's about 30 feet, maybe 20 past it in those trees. Yeah, so I played this hole once. I feel like um, the drive is definitely a hyzer, but you want to push forward more than anything. Yeah, if you could get like a flip up to fade, that kind of shot, yeah. you'll probably be well off. Ricky doing it pretty well, just throwing it high, letting it glide. I believe that's Joshua's. It's a defender and enforcer, he told me. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you, but it's got a sweet die on it. Yeah, I know, it's a spin die. He has all his disc die, they're sick. Josh has some swaggy discs. He's got some Patan stamps, he's got some. Uh, I mean, some of that new trilogy plastic is just cool looking. I don't know. And this is a far push for a forehand, but. That looks inside. A little bit. Yeah. He might have to scramble a little bit out of there. We'll see what he's got. Is that a PD from Thunder? Yeah, I believe so. So, yeah, I like this. That punch it on Heiser, it gets up to flat and then just rides forward. I think that'll be, that made the corner well, and he should have a nice look into it from there. That flip up the fade shot is just perfect. Yeah. That's what you want. And there's not much to do from over there but pitch out yeah that's especially if you're a lefty that's exactly why i say you want to just get it to go straight and not worry about going left so much off of the tee because he just kind of got stuck in there and he can't make that corner to get into the woods from where he's at but he didn't put a nice approach down there and ricky's putting something through yeah i think that was some, a great effort from him and awkward position for josh and you can see thunders this just right past it kind of a weird position to be in for both of them. That might, I think that'll putt from there. Yeah, he's probably got a little look. I think that's another upside down mutant. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that looks great. Play the slide off the roots, a little skip action. It's an interesting way to play it. Ricky. Oh! Here we go. The temp basket does not accept that one. Yeah, no. Good bid, though. I mean, to be drawing metal like that from downtown this early in the round, that feels yeah. good. Ricky has nothing but confidence all day. And so does Joshua. Speaking of confidence, geez. Joshua is hot. Just, I mean, that was a great dead center hit. Walked it in. And that's honestly a very good par from Daniel. Yep. Say that. And a good birdie from Thunder. That mutant was a crazy shot. Yeah. I mean, I, that's, that's how you have to play this hole, I feel like, how he did it. Get it nice and straight with a little bit of fade. Put you in a position to... Put your up shot close. And we got hole four, par three. It's kind of a big forehand dog leg. The basket's out to your right. You really just want to get it down there and hope it fades in time. Yeah, this is a tough one to park just because of how right you have to get after hitting the gap. So like a really high forehand or a turnover that's really high, you almost want it to like come backwards once you make it through this gap. Yeah, and honestly throwing too high, these trees kind of make a little ceiling. You could like hit him on the way out, which would suck. Mm. And Josh is out there, but as you see, that wind just didn't play nice with him, just swatted that disc down with the tailwind. Yeah, tailwind is not the wind. You want a headwind to kind of push that nose up. You just keep it in the air. Both of those look like pretty nice drives. I mean, 
and outside the circle look on this hole is pretty common. Ricky just saucing his drives on the forehand. That, wow, that was great. To that, get long like that. That is gone. And being able to throw backhand, I don't know if it's an advantage or disadvantage, because you want that, like, hard fade. Yeah, it's, I feel like it's all about the angle, nose angle on this one. That looks pretty He's good. got it up high enough, but... A little short, but that, I mean, that's a putt. Yeah, he hit some trees. It's probably the only wrong thing with that drive. If he can make that. Oof. Oh, that's tough. That step putt that just doesn't quite get there. Yeah, if he can make that, we might have been looking at a star frame. Or at least close, because that was probably the longest one. Yeah. But everyone else has just saw that, and like, I don't want to touch this basket. I'm scared. I... I just want to point out, Ricky is like swagged out right now. Oh yeah, Ricky. the glasses. He just got the jacket. No. Oh. So, uh, Thunder's just decided it was dancing today, oh. and that is, that's gross. Dang, that was. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't a great putt, but you don't expect it to just bounce out at the back like that. I, I've seen Dis do like Tony Hawk's and like slide <laughs> off. But I've never seen him dance out. Man, that's kind of gross. Hole five, part three. This one is kind of another forehand, if I'm right. You kind of just want to push straighter than you think on your mm -hmm. forehand and then just let it naturally get down. You don't want a lot of hyzer. Yeah, I feel like for me, when I played this hole, I went backhand with something just slightly understable because I'm just trying to push forward and then have a little bit of finish at the end. But a forehand definitely works, especially if you want to, if you feel more comfortable hitting this gap. Um, short, but not super easy. Yeah, you could definitely just throw dead straight and be well off. Man, that was a very overstable disc that he just yeah. threw there. And just too much power from yeah. his forehand. This is probably an Audi from Josh. Well, yeah. maybe it's mid, but I feel like... Uh, I believe it's an Audi. It looks overstable. He kind of just throws those constantly, so... Yeah, those are like his go-to. Ooh, he walked off like he just knew it was parked, and yeah, it was. Yeah, he, he didn't even need to look. He's uh, done. Yeah. It's over. Thunder a little low. The tree honestly was kind of friendly though. Yeah, it kicks him out, but not really gonna be able to save Brady from there. Yeah. Any of these woods, you're not having a good time. Daniel just a little high, kind of faded too early. He's gonna be in a tough spot there. This is sort of just like a routine approach that you feel like you should get there close every time. Yeah, uh, I can't really tell how close that one got, but you don't really want to leave yourself a putt for par after a drive like that. On no. a hole like this, you want to just Come on. make it as easy as possible. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, that, so that hit the right side chain. Did it? Yes. Good grief. Also, my favorite part about watching Ricky's every time he throws a floor, he does a little, little snap. Oh, that's nice. It's, what a stylish dude. He is. Daniel, <gasps> oh my goodness the basket just does not like anyone today wow i mean that was i mean look like dead center pull with some hyzer and just yeah. said nope he was like 15 feet out and it just spat back at him jeez that was brutal josh with a nice little tap in birdie he's got to be yeah that feels yeah, good josh is running away early with this rain about to come in, you're thinking that's going to be really good. Yeah. Also, everyone disregard what the <laughs> drone is showing you right now. No <laughs> yeah. one's going this way. Yeah, this hole is, uh, I guess someone would have, it's a blind tee shot, and uh, you just do whatever you can to get it as close as possible. I see everyone throwing, like, backhands super high and just letting it fade and just, like, picking a line in the woods and praying. Yeah, overhands, grenades, I mean, tomahawks, spike hyzers. Maybe not a lot of forehands. Maybe a forehand turnover. Like it just, it's literally whatever it takes yeah. to kind of get you a good look. No one's touching the quote unquote fairway. It doesn't exist. Ricky playing it right, about the same as Josh. See where that lands. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that kind of roll. There's like a little ditch that you don't really like, but it's not awful. Is that probably a mutant? I feel like that's a method. Yeah, that's a method right there. Silver Sable's what it is, and oh, that's is that the ditch you were talking about right there? Yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, but I remember Thunder was talking about this hole, and he really did not like it going in. He's like, everyone parks it, and I don't. Yeah, it's and like <sighs> that man is close. But, oh, that's a good shot right there. But this hole, it's weird. As you can see, Ricky got a little like roll away. 
it just kind of didn't put him in a good position. And I've seen some putts from, you know, this side of the fairway or the green have some mm-hmm. ugly rollaways, so. And look at this. That man is parked. That's great. Yeah, that's great. He likes that. A shame that Ricky kind of just, like, got away from the green, but everyone else is just easy. It's a weird hole. Yeah, I mean, you throw your, your little spike hyzer up there. If you get close, great. Get your two and get out of there. <laughs> if you don't, you just throw it up, and then you do a weird straddle around the tree for extra style points. <laughs> He's forever an entertainer. Absolutely. Hole 7, par 3, 320 feet. This one's, like... Would you say it's a forehand or is it more of a turnover? Um, I believe it's a forehand. A lot of these guys are probably going forehand. I think I would go forehand and try to miss that tree we, that the drone just passed right there. And then try to get through this stuff, you know? You can't really make it miss those trees down there, but um, there's one tree that I try to beat and then move right and hope you're close. Yeah, it's kind of just luck at that point once you're down there. That's... That look launched. Josh has some serious power. Like, I don't know. He's just, he can throw like 500 on backhand and he doesn't even care about it. Man's an animal. Yeah, definitely a forehand right. specialist. He's got both, but his forehand oh, yeah. is, if I was to steal one thing, I would definitely steal his forehand. Oh, yeah. That's a great shot from Thunder. Miss the, misses the tree and then he's probably stuck behind one tree right there, but it's going to be in good shape. And that's a little sawed off. Not going to be in a good position there. Ricky just oh, eating no. one. Here it comes, everybody. You can see the rain. Oh, no. There it is. This is not light sprinkles, either. This is like a... Hole 7 is where it started coming down. And Daniel just can't even see anything with all this rain. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this is... uh. It's gross. Yeah, this is not fun. Ricky made a really good approach, and Daniel's somewhere in there. Okay. That's kind of just pitch out and hope you get close to the bucket. Yeah, that was a pretty good effort right there. This would be a nice one to hit. And nice. the rain from That's... distance. Wow! <laughs> what a putt. I mean, if you're playing like that, you're, you're going to keep first for a long time, especially in the final round. Oh, and then just a, a little bit of lack of commitment. That might be just because of the rain. Sometimes you don't want to just... You don't feel comfortable just sending it. Man, they're... Oh, my God. Uh, I'm sorry, Daniel, but these mock whatevers just hate you. <laughs> yeah, that's... Man, that's rough. Make sure if you have these in your home course, just go beat one up. <laughs> just let them know. Yeah. yeah, these baskets, the chains are light. The cages are really deep. Weird things can happen. And hole eight, this one's a pretty straight shot. This is almost aceful. Yeah, I've seen people go forehand here. I definitely just go backhand. Um, and yeah, I've seen some, some definitely close calls on this one. It's one of those holes where you're basically looking at the bucket and you're like, I can get that. Has the rain sort of subsided a little bit here? Or? So the rain is, it's like an, it's like a light switch. It just keeps going okay, on and off got all day. Josh is really good on that one. And he, you could tell he's just kind of feeling it right now. You hit that putt in the rain, you hit a couple really nice birdie putts to start. He's throwing the disc with confidence. That yeah. looked pretty good from Thunder. So the only issue now is that every tee pad is slick. Oh, dang, yeah. You can see on Thunder, he didn't feel too comfortable at first on that forehand. You can even see it on Daniel's feet. Turn a little. Oh, wow. If he could just get out the way. Oh, that, that looks good. That's really good. Yeah. This is your farthest putt. This is like. Oh. Never mind. Ricky just had the line, had everything, and the tree was right there waiting. Daniel needs this. Yeah, that feels good. You, you kind of need one of those to reset that putting confidence. Yeah. And it's not like he's been throwing bad putts so much. That's a good putt right there. But he's just yeah. kind of been uh, not dead on, and even when he is, it kind of spitting out. Yeah, so. just spit out, slice throughs, everything. And Josh was parked. Yeah, Josh is doing work right now, of course. He likes it. Hole 9, par 5. Ignore the lack of drone footage. We lost the storage. Um, <laughs> it's a par 5. It's really long. You want to get out to this fairway, and then you're going to be looking down this gut. And once you're here, you're really just getting down this straight shot in hopes of getting to the bucket. 
Yeah, I mean, the, this drive is not easy just because of how high you are on the hill. So the angle control of getting it kind of nose down is very important. You see kind of Josh looks like he slips, honestly. Yeah, this tee pad was like, it was oiled up. Yeah, this is a very tough three. Oh, we got some slippage there as well. Yeah, really but I like this. Good. If this can kind of come back, he might be in a good spot over there. Yeah, Thunder is just rip that one. Yeah, I like that. He looks like he might be past that uh, that cage there and be able to look more into it. That's pressing the OB on the left side. Most people usually don't see that. It's got to fade. Oh, so that's out of bounds? That's in bounds. In bounds. The okay. path is in bounds. Got it. The creek is out of bounds. Well, that's a great spot, I think, over there. That is there. really good. Better than being OB. Absolutely. Yeah. Ricky just Bro. cut through that tree. <laughs> He's hype. He just ignored it. <laughs> He's hype. It probably, like, not 50 feet off, but he doesn't care. He's yeah, so out there. if you're Josh right here, you're just going to kind of try to flex this right into that gap. Give yourself a nice open approach for your birdie. Yep. That looks like he's in good shape over there. Doesn't near perfectly. Ricky giving it the snap. And that's a little left. He might need some love on that one. Going to a knee here. He must have a, that low ceiling right in front of him. This, he might not be trying to cover a lot of ground here. He might just want to... Yeah, he's he's got that tree right in his way. He's definitely just trying to get down the fairway without chewing too much off. Yeah, that was a good shot. Thunder, just beautiful position. Wow, yeah, love that. Yeah, especially after nearly slipping off that tee pad, that would have been, that would have been a shame. But that's a really good shot. Josh, he's still got some distance to the pin from here. Yeah, he's got a little bit to go. Now he's kind of playing with the woods. <laughs> Daniel has to get on two knees this time. So, like, the power he can generate from that, though, is kind of gross. Oh, that's amazing. If you've ever tried to throw on two knees, it's, like, not easy. So you're not doing that? No. No one here, maybe Silas, probably can generate 400 feet without trying. <laughs> on two knees? I don't yeah, know. Maybe. But no normal person, none of you listeners are doing that, what Daniel just did. Thunder just oh. a really soft up shot. That so that's beautiful. So that puts for a four, for a birdie right there. Yep. Yeah. I mean, Thunder's just showcasing how to play this hole. Get that drive to the right side, forehand, then approach. Should be a routine tap in. Oh, looks like Josh kind of lost his footing there a little bit. Yeah, he was a little yep. in the mud, I believe. But, like, you got five strokes to play with. You don't really have to chew off 800 feet in one shot. So right. If you're, if you're Josh right now, you're just trying not to bogey, and you're feeling your game right now, so just take the birdies when you can and uh, stay away from any high numbers so that you can kind oh, yeah. of just ride this in. I meant more so Thunder playing it perfectly. Oh. But yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. Josh has a really big cushion right now. So that's yours. Ricky had nothing to do but just get out and walk away with a bogey. I think he might have messed up something there, but that's going to be it for our front nine. Catch the back nine out immediately. Anything left to say? No, I'm excited to see how this shakes out, though. It looks like we got some uh, good golf being played by these guys. Yeah, we got Josh's on a rip. Yeah, I'm excited to see what he does on the back. All right, catch you later.